has the GOP leadership done enough to stop the petition? Uh, no, and it, it's not hard to stop, but the, the way you characterize the thing on the revolt, uh, it's important to point out they didn't take a, a page out of our playbook in the Freedom Caucus. You got 25 Democrats pushing a, de 25 Republicans pushing a Democrat bill, right? It's a all-out amnesty of 3.7 can come up under their bill. They've got Steny Hoyer and 200 Democrats pushing the Democrat platform and agenda. The Freedom Caucus pushes what we promised as Republicans we would do for the American people. So you can't get a more stark difference, right? And so they have this Queen of the Hill procedure where four votes come up. The Goodlatte bill, the way everything proceeds up here is usually through a bill, right? The Farm Bill, the NDAA bill. We have a Goodlatte bill on immigration, which is the compromise bill, which deals with the DACA kids. 700,000 all DACA kids documented get a pathway to right. the labor force, et cetera. And so that's in the bill. Uh, the, the 25 Republicans you mentioned want the Democrat uh, policy of a full amnesty up to 10 million people over a decade. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a stark contrast that has not been vetted through the American people, and they don't want it. When we say that they're taking a page out of your playbook, we mean it yeah. more in the sense that members feel empowered to speak against congressional leadership. Should that be the case? Should members feel more empowered? And if they actually go ahead and sign on to this petition, should they be, uh, should they have rep feel repercussions for it? Um, again, I'd, I'd uh, use different language. It's, it's not emboldened to go against leadership. But leadership promised us a majority, the majority on any bill that goes forward out of the Republican caucus. So we're not going against leadership. We're going with what leadership said. They said they'll put the Goodlatte bill on the floor. Uh, Paul Ryan promised a year and a half ago he'd run all five of Goodlatte's immigration bills through committee. So we're not going against. We want to just keep our word. We're not going up against leadership. We're just saying, leadership, uh, please hold folks that are going against the Republican platform and our promises to the American people, uh, keep them honest, right? We're, we're just staying true to the American people and the promises we made on the Republican platform. And Trump, through Bernie, ran on taking care of the American worker, the American citizen, not letting wages go down. And he won, right? Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, et cetera. And Bernie was winning until the Democrats rigged it against him. And so it's a powerful issue uh, that the middle class, the working person, totally gets. Right. Uh, but the cheap labor crowd, it differs uh, with the, with the broad swath of Americana on that. So, Congressman, I've never had the privilege of serving on Capitol Hill that you've had, so explain something to me, not having been on Capitol Hill. If the good lat approach is such a good approach, you just said the middle yep. class really wants a good lat approach, why do you have to yep. tie it to the agriculture bill? Why do you have to hold the farmers hostage? Why do you have to hold food stamps hostage? Why don't you just bring that up separately, vote it up or down? <laughs> well, <laughs> I think you just missed everything I said. And so, uh, that's what leadership has promised. That's what we want to do. We're not, no one's holding anything hostage. We promised we were going to bring the Goodlatte bill up for a vote. It hasn't come up. It's been six months. They, we were promised it after we voted on the budget bill, on the CR, that the Goodlatte bill would come up, and it still hasn't. So no one's holding anything hostage. We just want everyone to keep their promises to the American people, and then it's all fine and dandy. And okay. we think it does have okay. the votes, right? Once yeah. you put your voting so, card in there, we'll see if we have the votes. I think we so, will. So I want to understand this. I am trying to listen very carefully. Is this basically trust yeah. and verify with respect to your own leadership? Because they promised to do it, so why do you vote against the agriculture bill? Because they haven't yet had the vote on the other one. Don't you trust them? Well, I just told you, it's not a matter of trust. It's just they haven't come through on this. And well, what, but, but they I promised you they will. Is, they promised you they will, sir. I believe yes, third week right, of June, a, if I'm not mistaken, as well. Yep. Yep. And that just came about uh, lately. That wasn't uh, the promise prior. We were promised to vote on Goodland after the CR, which was several months ago. And so that hasn't happened. And then the key trigger point was not the Freedom Caucus on this issue. The timing could not be more clear. When the discharge petition uh, took over by 25 Republicans with Steny Hoyer and 200 Democrats, that changed the map. That changed the timing. That changed the tone. Uh, when you got 25 Republicans going to push the Democrat platform, that's a problem. And so that scuttles the House floor. Uh, we've been, Freedom Caucus has been working very good all year on the budget. We did a budget with Paul Ryan, 12 approach bills, passed. We did tax cuts. I was messaging with a conference with everybody. It's a good team. We've got huge success. African-American, Hispanic unemployment rates are at their historic lows, historic lows. Economic growth's up. Job optimism's up to 70% now. 
All the political polls are shifting our way. Uh, so we don't want anything to cut in the way of that, right? So let's just follow regular order. And regular order means you put a bill on the floor called the Goodlatte Bill. The other group doesn't have a bill they're putting forward, right? So that's no, no way to run a shop, and that's all we're asking for.